All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, wakey, wakey. <laughs> we are hearing our destination, uh, Würzburg. Uh, to the right-hand side, you see Jenny Randers Hacker at the moment. This is a typical vine-growing village. And you see the hills surrounding this village, actually the hills um, lining um, the banks of the river Main are covered by vineyards. And uh, interestingly enough, you see that these um, vineyards are actually planted vertically. Now, I don't know how many vineyards you might have already seen uh, during your travels, but most of them actually have been planted <coughs> in rows, basically, or in line, like um, horizontally. Um, this is uh, supposed to battle the danger of erosion, and also this makes picking these grapes easier. Um, so why do the Franconians plant them vertically? Uh, one big reason is, if you plant them vertically, with the way the sun is falling into this valley, um, these uh, vineyards or these white plants will not throw shade on each other. That way, <coughs> each grape gets a lot more sun and the resulting wine is uh, better, uh, has a higher uh, sugar component, basically. Um, this makes harvesting these grapes obviously a bit more difficult. Uh, these witness cannot meaningfully uh, employ uh, machines for the harvest. Uh, they need to harvest all of these grapes by hand. Now, most of these vineyards are actually pretty small, um, owned by uh, families. In a lot of cases, these plots of land have been passed down from generation to generation. The forefathers of the people growing wine here today might have done so for centuries. There are some locations here where you can find archaeological um, evidence that um, there have been um, wine plants for over a millennium now, like this came with the Romans and then it kind of took hold here in this region. And so this is obviously um, a business or uh, well, a profession that is deeply rooted uh, in tradition. Um, the larger vineyards, uh, they uh, actually, uh, when the harvest season comes, employ cheap labor which means in a lot of cases like migrant workers or previously students as well. I have done this for um, two uh, seasons actually and let me just tell you I'm very happy um, with today just sitting at the front of this bus and telling you about it. Um, it is quite exhausting going up and down these uh, hills and uh, just picking um, these grapes um, rising uh, early in the morning and all of that. And the typical Franconian wines cultivated here are actually okay. So there is some red wine here as well, but most of the wine varieties are actually white wines. So I think Kale. Um, typical varieties would include um, the Silvana grape, uh, the Miraturga grape, there's some Bacchus cultivated here as well, and also Riesling, although Riesling can be found in a lot of regions, which is not special to this area here. The front, we see the fortress, um, or Festo Marienberg, the fortress Mary's Mountain again. Now, I told you earlier that this was, for most of that time, the seat of the Prince Bishops of Würzburg, of the former rulers of this city. They used to live up there in this castle uh, because it offered them protection from um, rogues, burglars, uh, bandits uh, roaming the land, um, also from their foes, obviously, like um, other adjoining um, duchies or baronies. Um, but also it offered them protection from their own uh, subjects, actually. Because for a lot of the history, um, of Würzburg, the Prince Bishop and the subjects did not really see eye to eye, especially the people here in Würzburg. Um, they wanted 
Uh, they wanted more independence, they wanted to decide uh, for themselves, and the prince bishops wanted to hold a pretty tight grip on them. They even um, quarreled violently a couple of times during the history of Würzburg. And so even today, um, the bishops of Würzburg actually need a special invitation um, by the mayor of Würzburg to even be allowed to enter the city hall. And when they do, there will always be some councilmen who boo or who stomp their feet. Um, there are a lot of people holding on to these ancient rutches even today. But in the 18th century, um, things had cooled down a bit already. And also the cities um, grew in importance. So it was just not fashionable enough um, for these powerful men to live up in this lofty, windy castle on the hill. Uh, so instead, they built for themselves, or they had people built for them, um, a city palace, a baroque palace at the city center. And this is the residence palace, the city palace that we are about to visit in a couple of minutes now. It is by the UNESCO considered to be a World Cultural Heritage Site, it has this official title and it houses, um, for example, um, the world's largest single-framed scenic fresco. There is a mirror cabinet, um, basically made entirely out of gold and mirrors. So uh, there are quite um, a lot of very impressive um, rooms and it uh, looks um, very pretty from the outside of these as well. So I would actually strongly advise you to visit this palace. But on the other hand side, uh, obviously there is no shame in well, well, being just a bit tired after the day that we already had. So if you decide for yourself, well, I guess, uh, I, guess I have enough for the day. Um, I want to go back to the ship to relax a bit. Uh, that's also an option. Um, you, you can just stay on the bus when we um, arrive at um, the residence palace and our bus, bus driver Sasha will bring you um, it's nice, uh, will bring you um, back to your ship. Um, for all the others who want to come with me and visit the palace, I will give a guided tour and there is as well. What we will need is a quiet box device, because I, I will use the microphone to talk to you, to give this tour. And also, you might want to take your wallet with you as well, um, because there is a bookshop in there. And, um, and you might want to take your cameras or your smartphones, um, because um, there are a lot of very nice photos to be taken of the outside of this palace and of the palace gardens. Uh, sadly, um, of the inside we are not allowed to take any pictures. Um, once we are inside the palace, you are allowed to carry your cameras around, but we trust you that you uh, don't use them, which is uh, forbidden by the palace. Uh, everything else that you don't want to take with you into the palace, you can actually leave right here on the bus because after Sasha, our driver, has brought back the people who will want uh, to go back to the ship if there are any, um, he will come back to the palace and pick all of us up after we are finished with our palace tour and some free time. The palace and um, the palace gardens, the park surrounding the palace. Um, so. Uh, for example, I will leave my jacket and my Viking bag uh, in here as well. I will just take um, uh, the lollipop and uh, the quiet box with me um, to give the tour to you. Like the tax rate was at the same level as in the neighboring um, areas, um, but because uh, the people had a high income, um, the tax was higher. Uh, the tax was higher, and uh, that way they were able um, to finance this. Like the trading of the wine, the wine growing, um, stuff like that, 
was affording um, the people as well uh, some pretty good living conditions. I think that's something that is worth keeping in mind uh, if you think about that, because um, with a lot of older buildings, um, they, um, they are basically um, like um, the result of tyranny, of um, rulers uh, letting their own people or own subjects uh, go hungry. Um, uh, letting their own people go hungry and um, paying for these um, very expensive buildings. Um, but uh, in the case of these prince bishops, um, the people obviously did not have as many rights as today, and there were, was some dissent, obviously, um, about the a very different living condition inside um, was, uh, I told you, a rich Ronian wine. He ordered hundreds of barrels uh, or hundreds of liters of it uh, a year um, to uh, serve in his house and to give to his friends. And uh, so one day he was asked what the three things uh, are that he couldn't live without. And without much thinking about it, he said, well, that's easy, obviously, wine, women, and poetry. Then um, someone said, okay, I can't live without. And um, the poet thought a bit about it, but he pretty soon answered, well, obviously, wine and women. And then somebody asked him what... Uh, now I have passed on the typical Franconian joke, so you can spread it around in your own computers. The fortress up on the hill. Um, you can visit it, but um, actually, there the uh, interior uh, architecture was destroyed during the war because there was a large fire there. And so, um, ask them how it looked in there. Ich glaube, ich hier direkt vorne, aber das zweite. Ah, ja. Das erste, das zweite. Daneben hat es angelegt. Ah ja, prima. Dann äh, kannst du mich direkt dann hier gleich auf die Promenade fahren. Okay. Ich bin nicht sicher, ob ich da aufpasse. Doch, das ist gut. Ich glaube, ich habe das. Nee, wenn andere drauf fahren, komme ich auch drauf. Ja. So, bei Vorbeifahren dachte ich mir, ja. Ja, ja, das verstehe ich. Also, das gehe ich nicht. Ja, klar.
Right, we can already see your ship. It's like, it's, yeah, get out. Um, it is docked in the second row. Uh, for your attention throughout the day. I hope um, you had an enjoyable outing. I um, wish you all the best of luck. Um,